Okay, this is the third in, this, in a series of videos where we talk about the expressibility of natural numbers in terms of sums of squares. And so this is the big theorem about expressibility in terms of the sum of two squares. So let's look at it. So if we've got a natural number n, then n is expressible as a sum of two squares if and only if every prime factor that is congruent to 3 mod 4 appears with an even power. And along the way, uh, as we prove this, we're going to need these two facts, which are in the earlier parts of this video. So if P is not congruent to 3 mod 4, then P it can be written in the form of x squared plus y squared for x, y, and n. So, and obviously I'm here using P as a prime. So that means if P is the number 2 or it's congruent to 1 mod 4, then it can be expressed as a uh, sum of two squares. And the next thing we have is this multiplicative property of the expressibility. So if m and n are expressible as the sum of two squares, then m times n as well. Okay, so uh, before we get uh, going with the proof, what I want to do is just look at a couple of uh, real quick examples. So let's look at uh, 534 first. So what we'll do is factor this into um, its primes. So let's do 2 times 3 and times 89. So that's the factorization of 534 into primes. I'll let you check that if you want. And so now notice 2 is obviously the special even prime. 89 is congruent to 1 mod 4. 3 is congruent to 3 mod 4. But it does not appear with an even power. So that means this thing is not expressible. Okay, so let's look at one more example. So let's look at uh, 5, 8, 4, um, 8, 2, 0. Okay, so if we factor this into primes, we get the following. So 2 squared times 3 to the 4th times 5 times 19 squared. Okay, so now notice 2 is the special even prime, 5 is of the form um, 1 mod 4, and then 3 and 19 are congruent to 3 mod 4. But 3 and 19 appear with even powers, so that means that yes, this is expressible as um, a sum of squares, a sum of two squares, and in fact we can write it like this. So 684 squared plus 342 squared. Okay, so there's actually a nice strategy that we can use in order to express this as a sum of squares kind of by hand instead of just, I did this in Mathematica, but instead of doing something like that. And that will be covered in uh, the next video in this series. For the rest of this video, we're going to focus on the proof of this theorem. Okay, uh, good. Okay, now we're ready to look at the proof of this theorem, so we're going to start with the forward direction. In other words, let's suppose that n is expressible as a sum of two square integers. So what we'll do is we'll write n equals x squared plus y squared. And I guess I should say for um, x and y positive integers. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is uh, let's take p to be an odd prime um, that's a factor of n. And it's going to have an additional property. So with the property, that p to the 2i plus 1 divides n, but p to the 2i plus 2 does not divide n. In other words, 2i plus 1 is the largest power of p that divides n. 
So now if we look over here and see what we're going for, we want every prime factor that's congruent to 3 mod 4 to appear with an even power. So we have started with this thing as expressible. Now we're saying that the largest power of this prime that divides n is odd. And so that means in order to prove this, what we want to show is that p is congruent to 1 mod 4. <coughs> So let's reiterate. So we've got the largest power of P that divides N is odd. We want to end with that as congruent to 1 mod 4. So that means that if the largest power of P that divides N is even, it's allowed to be 1 mod 4 or 3 mod 4. It's not forced to be 1 mod 4 like it is in this case. Okay, great. So I think this is a good place to stop for this board. So I'll clean it up and then we'll move on with the rest of the proof. Okay, so so far we have p to the i plus 1 divides n, and that's the largest power of p that divides n. And then we have n expressed as a sum of two squares, x squared plus y squared. Now the next thing that we want to do is set d equal to the gcd of x and y. And then uh, also A is equal to X over D and B is equal to Y over D. But now notice that implies that the GCD of A and B is equal to 1. So that's like sort of a pretty obvious fact that's usually done at the very beginning of a number theory class. Okay, but now let's notice that means a squared plus b squared equals m, which is some natural number, but we can also express that as n over d squared. Okay, great. Now from here what we'll do is uh, let j be a natural number um, that is largest such that pj divides d, this greatest common divisor of x and y. But now notice what that gets us. So that gets us the following. p to the 2i plus 1 minus 2j has to divide m. So let's talk through that. That's because 2 to, p to the 2i plus 1 divides n. But then we've divided d squared out of it. But what we know is p to the j divides d squared. So we've divided um, 2j copies of p out of that um, as we produce this number m. Um, and now let's also notice the following. That uh, 2i minus 2j plus 1 needs to be bigger than or equal to 1. So the important thing to hear no is to notice that it can't be zero. And why can't it be zero? Well, because it's an odd number. And why can't it be less than zero? Well, that's because uh, j is obviously um, smaller than i, given the fact that pj is the divisor of this greatest common divisor of x and y, which was used to build this n. Okay, so where we'll go from there is the following. Since we know this number is uh, at least 1, that tells us that P divides M. Because here we have P to a number that's at least 1. And now the next thing we can do is observe that P does not divide A. So let's see why. So otherwise... Uh, something would go wrong. If P divided A, if P divides A, then that means uh, that P would divide M minus A squared, which means P would divide B, but the GCD of A and B is 1, so uh, that's a contradiction. So we contradict the fact that A and B are relatively prime. Okay, good. So we're really making good progress. I'll clean up the board and then I think we're almost finished with this proof. Okay, so now we're almost done with this direction of the proof. Let's see where we are so far. We have p to the 2i plus 1 is the largest prime power dividing n of p. And then we have n is x squared plus y squared. We have d is the GCD of x and y. a and b are x over d and y over d respectively, so that means their GCD is 1. We set m equal to a squared plus b squared. p divides m, and that was actually the biggest argument we had so far, and then P does not divide A.
Okay, so since that P does not divide A, um, that means we have the following. So there exists an A inverse modulo P. Okay, good. So in other words, we can set Z equal to A inverse times B mod P, which tells us that uh, A times Z is congruent to B mod P. Okay, good. And now this comes from the theory of solutions to linear congruences. I've got a bunch of videos on that if you want to check it out. Okay, now uh, from here what we'll do is the following. We'll start with this equation and then uh, we'll see that that'll take us essentially to the end. M equals A squared plus B squared, but that is congruent to A squared plus A times Z squared using uh, this that we just argued. But now notice we can factor an A squared out of that and we get this is one plus Z squared. Okay, so now from here what we notice is that this is uh, equal to M, so I'm going to put this as e congruent to M, but now notice M is divisible by P. We showed that previously, so that means that this is congruent to 0 mod P. Okay, fantastic, but now what that tells us is that z squared is congruent to negative 1 mod p. And now here's where it gets a little bit tricky and it requires a little knowledge of something called quadratic residues. So it turns out that only certain primes um, have negative 1 as a perfect square. In other words, only certain primes have this quadratic congruent solvable and those are exactly the ones when p is congruent to 1 mod 4. So that means negative 1 is a quadratic residue mod p which tells us that P is congruent to 1 mod 4. So I got a bunch of videos on quadratic residues, the Legendre symbol and quadratic reciprocity and stuff like that, and that's where you would find something like this. Okay, so uh, as we outlined in the beginning of the proof, that is the end of this direction. So the next thing I'll do is clean up the board and we'll see that the next direction is quite short. Okay, so now we're ready to finish the proof of this theorem off with the reverse direction. So we'll start with the following. So let's assume every prime that's congruent to 3 mod 4 um, in, in N appears as an even power. So with an even exponent. And that's obviously uh, in its prime factorization. So now where we'll go from there is the following. So that tells us that we can write n as follows. We can write m n as a perfect square. And so this is a combination of all of those um, primes that are congruent to 3 mod 4 and perhaps other stuff that are... Um, with even exponents. So we factor out the largest perfect square we can, and then we have P1 up to PR, and then uh, P1 to PR are distinct primes, and they're not congruent to three um, mod four. Okay, great. So we've put all the 3 mod 4 stuff into this M, and all of the rest of it is not congruent to 3 mod 4. But now, um, by previous work, well, notice that M squared is equal to M squared plus 0 squared, so it is expressible as a sum of two squares, and then pi is equal to xi squared plus yi squared for all um, i between 1 and r, and again, that's from a previous result in a, in a um, previous video, and then we can finally use this uh, product um, fact about express, uh, expressibility of numbers to show that 
the product of all of these is expressible as a perfect square. In other words, we have n equals um, m squared plus 0 squared times x1 squared plus x y1 squared all the way up to xr squared plus yr squared. And then what we can do is there's a formula to do these just one at a time and express each of them as a sum of squares and then we'll have it. So um, that finishes this proof. Okay, good. So that's the end of the video.